Forget .NET, forget JavaScript. And the cool kids are doing AI, I hear. And if you don't do AI, you're just not cool enough. The reality is, uh, you know, lots of investments in AI all around. Uh, again, this is n n nothing new, the, you know, machine learning. And we have been talking about this for years and years. It's just the presentation and the smartness of AI has really made it much more mainstream. You know, the popularity of uh, large language models like ChatGPT and BARD, like it's just, you know, skyrocketed. Uh, so... What are what can we do with it? Uh, you know, obviously we can do you know developer productivity. We can have smarter applications. Uh, but what is this UI part? Uh, you know, is there any play with UI uh, with you know modern AI services? So I think the answer is yes, and that's why we are here. <laughs> so uh, Ed, why don't we maybe um, uh, pull up? Uh, up our website first and let's talk about what we are uh, you know about to talk about uh do you want me to or you would rather i wanted to share one of my favorite apps while we talk about this because i think um, the value proposition is something that people don't quite maybe grasp yet um well you're jumping you're jumping straight into our ai prompt that was that's the you know the light did i did yeah. I show uh, show too much? Yeah, um, yeah this is what here, I'll doing. show off one of my favorite apps. The stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah good. This is a, not a Teller app. And I'm not sponsored by Markdown Monster. It, Markdown Monster is an app for Windows that I use quite often, and um, it is uh, created by Westwind, uh, which is um, a, a Microsoft MVP basically that writes this app and he's got some other cool tech out there but th this is like one of my favorite tools to write markdown so it's a markdown in. editor yeah this is basically rick, rick strahl's um creation. oh i see yeah yeah he's very and well uh yeah he's he's really supportive of the mvp community and uh, if you have an mvp um uh, award he will give you a license to markdown monster but, uh, you know, he doesn't use our Telerik tools in here anywhere, but he does use this scenario that we're talking about today. Um, so, you know, you're writing blog posts and things in Markdown Monster. And uh, now there's this nice little image generator hmm. icon up at the top. And you can pull this up and create uh, chat GPT or Dolly uh, rather yep. based yep. images. Mm -hmm. So you can type in something in the prompt here. And all you have oh, to nice. do to yeah. get this working is you drop in your API key mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then you type and whatever it is, you know, I, I said like, uh, show me a robot staring into a black box. And, you know, this is what mm -hmm. came up. And then uh, once you have that, you can hit uh, embed and that you drop it right inside of your blog post or save nice. it to disk, drop it in your blog posts, whatever. Nice. So... You know, this is one of the integration points, I think, that people could really use something like a uh, uh, large, lang large language model, AI service, that sort of thing. You know, maybe in, in um, an app where you're doing some writing. Um, I, I think I gave me an example the other day, Sam, like if you're an insurance company and you have to do all of those, you know, insurance claim report things. Yeah. might be nice to have a template that you can run through an AI service to kind of help you build out what you're trying to say rather than writing it all from scratch, you know, give, you know, give you some room to fill in the blanks, but not have to reinvent the wheel every time. Yeah. Uh, maybe proofread things for you, uh, that type of stuff, or, you know, generate images like, like Rick's doing here. Yeah. So how, how do we get, you know, user interface like Rick has, which he, he built this one from scratch. Uh, but it'd be nice to have something out of the box, wouldn't it? Yeah, and also like this is kind of hard coded to be a desktop app. Like that window, those mm -hmm. you know uh, UI pieces are only for this app. You cannot really reuse it anywhere else. So maybe nice if if we could do something generic enough that you could reuse you know all across your app. Absolutely, because uh, what you don't want to have to do is rebuild that component every time you create an app and uh you know it's nice to have something where somebody's thought through some of the um you know the ui details what what kind of problems you're going to encounter or what kind of features you might want to have uh, yeah. in an ai you know chatbot for your app 
Yeah. Now, before you dive into Blazor, you're about to show off Blazor things. Uh, what I really liked was a post that uh, we wrote up. So if you head out to blogs.today.com, and uh, yeah, that thing on the right-hand side, it says blending AI with UI. Yeah, so this is our uh, one of our PMs, uh, Lubo. And uh, I think it talks about some nice use cases because, like, you you have all of this power of an LLM behind, um, you know, the service. How are you going to leverage that within your app? So, you know, hopefully you're not making the Bard or the Chat GPT. If you do, like, that's your standalone. Like, AI is all that your app does. Uh, but that's you know for the big, you know, folks in the room who are building AI services. I think the more realistic ones. Uh, if you scroll down, like he talks about task bars, like these in little integration points where you might have mm -hmm. like a drop down in your app, which is a little smart. It's powered by something AI. Uh, widgets, I think, is a very very common use case. Uh, you yeah. can you know combine multiple things, like you were saying, like maybe an out of office email, maybe you're doing like a every Friday report, or somebody has to do like an expense thing, uh, and you don't want everyone to just you know hand create, so you give them like a template. Uh, and all of those little pieces can be put together if you have the right UI components in place. Yeah, I like the rephrase functionality. Like I do that a lot. I'll pop something into uh, an LMM and say, rephrase this for me. I just don't like the way I wrote it. It didn't come out yeah. right. Yeah, but it, yeah. get, you know, it gives you, you know, it's in your, it's basically still in your own words. It just kind of fixes right. some of the grammar and it yeah. makes it a little bit easier to to digest them, you know. Yeah. And and, and this this it. this is a key thing to understand with any LLM. Like it's you know, what it presents you for the first time is probably not going to be up to your liking. So instead of completely rejecting it, you know, um, reiterate on it. Uh, the same goes with like code, like when we use things like Copilot or uh, I forget what the other service is. Like you can say, explain why did you tell me this, and then can you fix this? Can you mm -hmm. try doing things a little better? So rephrasing things, fixing things is is very common. And if you have to that, have that kind of functionality, you are looking at creating those buttons and those templates all by yourself. Yeah. So I think what we did was we have a brand new AI prompt and we tried doing it in the most generic way possible. So we serve multiple needs across your you know, development platform or framework of choice. If you do .NET, you, uh, you know, for web apps, you are, you know, for anything in the last you know, four or five years, you want to be modern, you're looking at Blazor uh, and that's Ed's uh, you know, jam. But uh, not everything revolves around Blazor. Uh, there are, you know, the web runs on JavaScript as well. So if you are doing JavaScript apps, then Kendo UI is our library of choice for all things, uh, you know, more than JavaScript UI, be it with Angular, be it with React or Vue, uh, or, you know, God forbid, jQuery, <laughs> but it's all good. Uh, we have done this for web apps, all types of web apps, whatever be your platform of choice. Uh, so you should mm -hmm. be able to render this AI component and AI prompt um, in your apps. Thindle's joined us in chat. Oh, um, no. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome, Thindle. Cool. Thindle was on um, my stream as well. And uh, Ed, we were talking about you behind your back in yeah. in the Slack channels. And folks were like, oh, this is, you know, trashing coffee is the perfect way to summon Ed, but Ed's on a stream. So. All right. So we, we want to see how, how to build this into an app. Is that what we want to do today, Sam? Or, I mean, just show me what this is because I have not right. played Let's take a quick look. as much as you have. Um, it's pretty pretty straightforward. So in in our overview example here on demos.telerk.com, um, this is our Blazor demo of the app. And uh, you can, you know, open up your AI widget here right in a, in a pop-up and... You can offer prompt suggestions like generate an out of office email, hit generate, and it's going to output um, basically a template generated by AI. And then, you know, you can give that a rating if you want, help train the bot, uh, and then automatically insert that into um, another text box or field in your, in your app. And um, this is just that, that AI prompt that we created uh, with uh, you know an API on the back end serving up some data. But what's nice about the AI prompt is you have this ability to create 
predefined suggestions. Um, you can tweak the output. Uh, you also have this handy toolbar where you can change like formatting, um, like uh, bind to like different um, formal ways of writing uh, that that out of office email. Maybe you're sending it to uh, coworkers you're friends with, or maybe you're you know, C-level staff, you want it to sound a little bit more profesh, whatever it is. Uh, you can do, you know, translations into other languages. So this toolbar here is completely customizable. Uh, you've got your ask, your output, and then this uh, optional toolbar here where you can add in other functionality um, to your AI outputs. And then, of course, you've got events to hook into to, you know, push it into other uh, forms that are data binding and things like that. Okay. Uh, I was asking, how do you back it? <laughs> However and, you want. Uh, so I, th I think the prompt itself is pretty straightforward. Um, what we could probably try to do is just integrate one into a Blazor app. With... Plug in, in and, and so if, you, if you're asking Thinda, like, what's the backend? It's just an API key. Uh, but before we go into that, Ed, I have questions. Mm -hmm. Um, first up, like this thing that pops up, does it have to be a pop-up? Uh, no. So in this example, you can see it's just a added to the okay. form itself. And then um, I'm guessing I can customize with my own prompt suggestions. I can customize. Yeah, so, yep. uh, okay. Not only can you add your own prompt suggestions, this one's adding some styling to it as well. So like it's got some really rounded edges on it. So just showing you a full control, yeah, yeah. Uh, not only of the template itself, but the the elements that are within that template. Uh, so they're, they're Blazor templates. Um, I would assume we could throw other components in there if we really wanted to and you know mm -hmm. use those to translate maybe maybe a date picker or something like that. I haven't tried that out myself yet, but I assume that would just work. Um, I mean, if it's a placeholder, we can throw in whatever we want. I mean, let's, let's go ahead and click on one of these two because it will, um, there, there's like some bolding here so you can control the output as well uh, and template that out. So you can see in the background, we got some strong tags around mm. the output. Uh, so you get uh, this kind of context object that has the, the prompt, the output, and all of the data that goes along with it that you can pop into the output template. Uh, same with the input template. And then of course, there's the toolbar where you get all your, your buttons and widgets and things that you can customize with that as well. So you can, you know, change these up all you want. There's even the ability to add other buttons to the toolbar up here. Mm -hmm. And you can control that so, through the view um, aspect of it. Yeah, uh, I see the localization uh, thing on the left. So when i'm providing the prompt suggestions like that piece of text if i have to localize in different languages that has to come from me but mm -hmm. ai can do the actual translation to different languages i'm guessing yeah so with the ui component itself like you're going to get you know the ability to translate you know outputs and things through the service but the ui part of it that we provide you want to be able to say uh where where this was like generate with ai or whatever and then output um i just switched those up to german so it went from ask ai and output to uh however you would say that in german uh, we could also choose oh, no. in there um, <laughs> so you can localize the ui part of the component and then yeah. um the, the AI generation part is kind of up to the service to provide it back in a in a different language if you want to. Hold on, this reminds me of a really bad thing, of childish thing. Oh no. Yeah, hold on, it's coming. All right, uh, so I'm gonna uh, bring up Visual Studio while you do that and see if we can yeah. blast through an actual real life demo here. We got uh, we got about. 40 minutes let's let's see if we can build something yeah uh and i can try maybe taking it out of your realm of just mobile or i mean just web stuff and uh my copy paste isn't working All right. so, so i'm gonna do a so the german of any, anything out which is why when it says like output uh the german of out is ausch so when you drive on 
German autobahns, uh, the exit signs, which uh, I mean, they essentially say Auschwitz or something like that. <laughs> I'm not pronouncing it right, but you throw in some, you know, uh, of, uh, people who are maybe over 40 and then they still are at 12 uh, in their in their heads. They just giggle about that for a long, long time because everything sounds you know, funny. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Uh, uh, Thindle, that is the uh, the generate button. There is tied to the um, on command execute. Oh yeah. Um, so I'm gonna do file new project. I'm gonna choose C sharp Blazor application um, with uh, with the Telerik stuff already installed on it. So this is our template that you can get with the component libraries. And then uh, we'll just demo expect failures folks we're doing it live i'm going to hit create and what this is going to give me is a dotnet 8 web app template with the telerik components already installed in it and we'll just use that ocean blue theme i'm going to uncheck cdn support and we'll go ahead and fire that up let it create let me, a project let me pull up the demos that do while you are doing this so you know folks yeah, can also grab, play around uh, off the demo site, I'm going to grab the template demo and just kind of poach the code out of it. Yep. So that's the demo that uh, uh, Ed's showing off Blazor UI yeah. Yeah, prompt. So I went down from the overview to the template because it's a little bit more simplified. And immediately I'm just going to go over to the project here. I'll show you what we have. So we have a web server up here. Uh, that's going to statically render uh, Blazor components and get like the ball rolling. And then this is the WebAssembly project here. Um, and this is one of those autom auto render uh, Blazor applications. So it will start up using Blazor server and then switch over to WebAssembly um, automatically, depending on what resources you have. So we'll keep that in mind. Uh, but you'll find all of the components here under pages under home uh, we've just got a simple demo in here that says uh, hello from teller blazer we'll go ahead and just move that this? up real quick yeah just see what we've we've got to work with and live it's, it's demo, funny live your, demo. your your weather just there says we windy mine's very windy outside it's like a uh, wind advisory this is basically what you get this is a teller button yeah and it gives you a response back this is the standard counter and the standard weather components, if you, and they're not anything uh, different from what you normally get. Uh, so let's go ahead and wipe this out and paste in the AI prompt uh, thing there. And I wiped out my page directive, so let's go ahead and do page equals there. So we have a route again, um, and then I think this is standalone. We can just run this. I don't think it was. Wait, you you got some references in, in code. Did you bring those in? Uh, these were automatically brought in through the template that I used to start it up. Okay. So I did file new um, Telerik project, and that gave me all of the dependencies for the chatbot component, the AI chat component, and there's the demo that we saw on the website running in mm. our app. So we're, mm. we're good. So far. Wait, wait, hold on. So where, where do these things are going to store down a little bit to your code? Sure. Where is this coming from? Oh, it's right there. Okay. Yeah, so. I, I copied it from demos.telerik.com. So I went over to AI prompt. So oh, yeah, yeah, I was thinking like you only copied the markup, but you did grab all of the I code copied the there, whole so. thing yeah. and it, it didn't have any real dependencies in here. It's just all kind of demo code. Um, and for simplicity's sake, I'm going to go ahead and wipe out some of the demo code here. I'm going to take out the custom uh, prompt, um, and then I think we're good to go on that. Let me make sure I didn't take anything out that's going to crash the build. All right, so we're, we're just taking it down just a little bit to make it easier to see. And then uh, we need what we need to do is tap into this handle prompt request, and what we want is a service that's actually back-ended by a real... AI uh, API, oh, right? Oh, you're, you're going to enter your open AI API key in here on stream, aren't you? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'll have to figure that out. Um, so I'll, I'll just take it down for a minute when I get ready to do that. 
But since this is a Blazor server and client auto render mode uh, application, we're going to need some services real quick. Um, and what we should probably do is go into the Wait, why, server why, component why, why services? Uh, because first of all, we need the AI um, API call, and we can't just run that um, on the client because our API key will be exposed. So oh, we're going okay. to put that behind. Um, well, I mean, if you were to do things right. We're going to put that behind a, <laughs> a service. And what we need to do for that is just create a quick little, uh, let's do an add new item. And we'll call this one open AI service, right? Have you used Bard much? Um, I have not used Bard at all. Okay, uh, I, I've heard of it a little it's bit. It's the Google version yeah, of yeah. all this, right? What, what it does um, uh, really well at this point, uh, I mean, in terms of prompt, it's, it's about similar. But uh, they are the only ones who have, I, th I think this is still in preview, uh, but they can, uh, compared to like DALI or other models, they can generate videos. Like you give it some text to say, you know, a monkey wearing a, you know, leather suit riding a bike, they will actually generate a video for you. That is quite remarkable. I have tinkered just a little bit, but it's, uh, I mean, creating a snap, you know, photo is one thing, generating a video takes a lot more computing. All right. The next thing we're going to need is an interface to back the service uh, look, with, look at because doing we have all right. All right. So we have to actually make this work. So what's going to happen is this is an a Blazor automatic .NET 8 application. So it will boot up in Blazor server mode if we do not have WebAssembly uh, .NET runtime for WebAssembly on our browser. So what it will do is it will try to go to a service. And if that service is on the server, it can call directly to the API and uh, use the API key. If it's on the client, it needs to do an HTTP request back to the, the .NET server and then run, uh, go get the API key there, run the service call and give us back data. So we've got two different services that are gonna do the exact same thing. We, we're gonna need an interface. So I'm going to which is why I think this thing, if I can say this right, servers. interface -itis. <laughs> This is a necessity here. I'm not one of the people that makes interfaces. Uh, I usually do interfaces after my class is all it stubbed be, out. It should be pain-driven development when you see a need for it. So I'm going to go ahead and drop this in the client app because the client app is already referenced by the server. So that will make the, the interface available by both uh, the client and the server. And then what we're going to need here is a task of string. We're going to go return a string from something. We're going to make an API request, and then we're going to have a prompt of string. All right. So we'll need that. Uh, this open AI service here now can implement the I open my service. Ed, what do we do with Bring our friends here? Thindal is saying, Thindal is saying the right way to do this would be to make an open AI microservice, <laughs> call that from both client and server, and then host it on Aspire. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to get into Aspire today. I'm going to do quick actions here. And let's see, quick refactoring, implement interface, and let it stub it out for me. And we'll do, a th uh, instead of throwing a new exception here, we will do a return uh, task of string. And then, um, oop, I did that wrong. Uh, return task dot uh, from result. And then we'll just say, uh, this is a fake API. All right, so we don't have the API built yet. We'll just go ahead and return a result from it. Uh, that'll let us kind of stub things out before we wire it up completely, right? Um, on the client, we also need a service. I'm going to actually see if I can copy that and paste it in. And... Yeah, this, this from result thing is interesting. Um, yeah. 
based on how you are doing things, that API um, may make it asynchronous. You're you're fine here because you are returning a task, but on the output, if you do not have an async method, and if you do give me a result, then it turns the whole thing as a you know blocking code. All right, so I've got my two services set up, Sam. Next thing I need to do is register them in both places. Um, we are going to need in here. Let's see if I can steal it from uh, an example I have. I don't like having to type stuff live. Where are you at? Where are you at? I need services. So that's really late. There we uh, go. For some of our friends in Europe, it's late evening. So it's sustenance, like food, something to drink. Yeah. Now other All folks right. can chime so in and keep trolling us in the we'll meantime. Bring in our open AI service. And we'll add it to Why scoped? Um, uh, because if we don't do scoped, uh, on the on Blazor WebAssembly, it doesn't really matter. Um, on because uh, everything is going to be scoped. Oh, anyway. I see. On the server side, it's like one request, like per request. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, on the server, we want to make sure we get a new one for each each client. Mm -hmm. So we will go up to services here, register that one, and why am I getting this underscore here? Imported type of. All right, I'm not sure why I'm getting that issue, but let's see what happens when we build it. Doesn't seem to be building, or I mean, doesn't seem to ha be having a problem building, so. It's Thursday for Visual Studio. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. So we've got a mock service basically so far. And with that mock service, I think we can come into home.razor where our UI component lives, and then we can start working with this handle prompt request. The first thing I want to do is take it out of void and do task, because if we don't, it's going to lose the thread, and won't it won't actually return anything. It'll just sit there idle. Uh, and then on this, we need to go back to the top and inject that service. So we'll do at inject, um, and I. Uh, uh, open AI service. We'll say AI service here. And we can come down and drop that in um, and say far result equals AI service. Uh, get, uh, why am I not getting, there it is, make AI request. Uh, and then we'll we have to pass in the chat box text from the teller component now, right? Mm -hmm. So we'll say args dot prompt. So that's our our chat prompt there. So go back to the main AI or make AI request one time, please. Uh, hang out one second. I got a uh, error here. I need to await that. Yes, please. That's what I was waitable. getting. To like, why is it not async wait? Uh, we will delete this out and say uh, result uh, dot, oh no, the result should be it. That's, that's result, the string. Yeah. So we can do that there. So this args.output is going to put the result of it back into the components output window, mm -hmm. right? And you want to see something before we run that? No, no, I was just gonna oh. say you're missing a single wait. So let's do a quick start without re debugging. Just runs a little bit faster. And then if we run into a bug, then we can debug. So build completed. And we should be getting, um, when this runs, the predefined fake service result that this is a fake API, right? And am I already running this in the browser? Blazor's up. Uh, not sure that's the correct one let's shut that one down rerun it just to make sure we're getting the right the right build i didn't see it like pop up or anything it usually gives you a little window when this is running come on 
web server is listening on port such and such. Okay. Let's try that again. Local host. No, it's not. Is it lying? It's lying to no, me. Different, so. different port. It was a different port? Yep. Yeah. Oh, 7282. All right. I don't know why it's not automatically opening. Local host. 7282. I got one right there. Okay, so that is the live view. And if we hit generate, this is a fake API. Yep. There you go. So all of our stuff is wired up correctly. Uh, so we have not only Blazor server, we have Blazor WebAssembly, and it's automatically switching between the two things, right? So uh, let's continue to like kind of push this into a real API service. Um, that code is going to live in this make API request um, uh, method. And we need to go out to uh, the open API or open AI API and yeah. do that actual request. And I'm lazy. I don't want to look at a bunch of docs for yeah, open yeah. AI. Oh, oh, oh. It's like that, that part is like, to me, that that's trivial because you're just giving it an API key and, and, you know, hooking it up. You think so, huh? Is it, <laughs> is it not? not? No. Okay. Well, I, I've done simple things uh, from apps where you just give it an API and you are making HTTP. I, client yeah. factory calls uh, i but... wish we could just pass an api key off so we're going to need some dependencies here and um, what i'm going to do is go up here and do manage nuget packages and i found a handy nuget package to kind of simplify all of this out and if we type in open a i in oh, here you need nuget packages for all the things we oh it's no nuget packages found i need to change the scope of my search here let's try that again and this is the one I found. Uh, okay. So this is a community project that lets you connect to basically anything besides the Azure OpenAI, because the Azure OpenAI already has a package. Mm -hmm. So if you're just going to OpenAI directly, and this leaves, uh, you know, gives you all of these other options here, you can go with this one. So I gave this a shot, and it actually worked out pretty good. So we'll go ahead and install that one. So we'll accept that and drop in uh, the uh, bits for it. And then I should be good. Uh, let me make sure I don't need any other dependencies. Uh, yeah, we're going to need some other dependencies um, in a minute because, like I said, we have an API key to put in here. We don't want that API key to be public. So what I want to do next is set up a place for that API key to live. Let me close all these out, get all this noise off my screen. Um, I'm going to right click on the server project, Sam. Let me guess, you're, you're ringing in a thing that does secrets. Yeah. Manage user <laughs> secrets. So we will right click manage user secrets. And in here is going to go an API key and, um, we need to give that some kind of meaningful name so we can get it back out. So uh, I'm going to call this one uh, Open API Key, and uh, this will be some key, and that will be a secret uh, that I will not share on stream. Uh, so I'm going to take this off stream for a moment. Oh, come on, come on. And place it over here and paste in an API key into it. You gotta see it to believe it. You're not gonna get very far with it. It, it maxes out at a, like twenty bucks. So <laughs> if I did share it, it would it probably last the end of the stream and be done. Uh, but that one is now all right. So that is saved and closed. Um, our API key is now in. Well, what else uh, did you add in the back? It's in a config file in the <laughs> app, right? Uh, if we want to retrieve that config file. Uh, what we need to do is open up a constructor here in the service, right? So we'll do CTOR tab tab and bring up this. And we want I configuration as config. Is that constructor snippet built in or is it yours? It is built in. No, if you oh, type in CTOR and hit tab, it will generate a constructor for you. And then in Visual Studio, we also do quick refactorings. Yeah, uh, I don't. I don't assign. do any of this in VS Code. <laughs> you write this all by hand. Yeah, 
Um, uh. You can do a sign there, or you can also do um, the uh, new, uh, what's this thing called? I'm trying to remember the name of it. The default, uh, default constructor. So we can do a default constructor here like that. So um, did I name this wrong? Why is it blowing up on me? I open it. Oh, oops. This needs to go up here. My mistake. Uh, let's do yeah, open you, curly you, braces. I'm, I'm making Visual glasses. Studio hate me right now. <laughs> that, and then we can remove that. So we can do um, this is a kind of a new syntax here, and it says uh, I've got an I configuration of config, and um, that's going to create the backing property and all the nonsense for me. And it says it's not currently being used. And uh, what we need to do is call. Um, I'm getting tired of you doing things right. Our uh, I uh, configuration API yes for this. key is going to be this, and we'll yank that key right out of user secrets okay so this gets dependency injected in for us so we don't even have to worry about it um, and then we can just pick it up here and then when we get our um, our api written uh, our api call written it'll be right here for us to use sound good yeah hold on i got questions um uh how does visual studio handle that secrets file um where, where is that uh, sitting right now you really is want it... me to open that back no up, no no i just want to know where it goes so <laughs> there is it in is the server a or is it file... in the web assembly no it's it is on the server you definitely want to put it on the server i don't know if you can even put it on web assembly no, it does they brought the uh file back but it's not going to really help you there um you'd have to put it in the ww root folder for okay. it to be accessible and then that's going to be available to clients you do not want to put it there you want it in the server project and in the server project let's see if i close this down and put it in file format mode here you can expand the tree here and then uh, there should be a file in here somewhere that's secrets.json or whatever it may actually move it to a, another in, folder in the bin or obj once you build yeah so it's it's not yeah. there and then on your actual server you'd have it in the in environment variables you wouldn't have it in a file yeah that's anymore. what i was going to ask like you know friends don't let friends mm -hmm. do that but if you right click and uh publish this thing to azure does it automatically put it in azure secrets or wh where does it go like or does yeah, it just like, goes, sit on the server it goes into a json file locally and then okay. on the server you put it in your your environment variables and pull it out of there all right, so we've .NET, got dot net uses secrets to find it out. Ah, interesting. So this config, um, this config key here, it'll pull it out no matter where it exists. So we don't have to sit there. I configuration is smart, and it'll look for it in many places and find it in wherever it's available. So it'll find it in the environment variables if it's there. It'll find it in user secrets if it's there. Uh, so we're we're good here, and we'll we'll get that API key um when we need it question for miss catherine here mm -hmm. this is all very fancy stuff for visual studio and blazer developers how do you do this in react like is there oh, a, i can't course... answer that i have no <laughs> idea it's a question for catherine or Alyssa for <laughs> angular like, yeah is catherine and Alyssa can handle that question uh, <laughs> handle like secrets like this right. so we need to call out to the api now so i'm going to drop some code in here um i've actually got uh da -da -da see my api key oops missing missing a call here so we need a new up and open api request and i'm going to push the key directly into the parameter for the key there so i don't need that first call anymore and then uh, why am i getting massive underscores of crap here technical term folks sorry about that <laughs> a weight operator why is it arguing with my await operator? It's not async, the um, method. Oh, public <laughs> async is the uh, ask. Hey, thank you, Sam. Is the I configuration thing uh, yours or is it built in? Uh, I configuration is built into ASP.NET. 
Uh. is part of ASP.NET. Yep. Um, and no, it comes that's... configured, iConfiguration comes configured out of the box to search for config.json, appsettings.json, and you can add things like XAML files, or not XAML, uh, XML files, and so on and so forth. And you can add custom resolvers and whatever. I feel like you have done this before, like you copied that. That API I chat did. call. So I, I tested I tested some of this code earlier. I wanted Ooh. to be able to show it in real time. You need to fail so, in real time. You need to this be able is to that, type in uh, one line at a time. I wish I could. Um, this is that uh, NuGet package that I brought in. So we're going to call a new API by using open API and then new up using our open API key. Uh, and then we call, um, we're going to call why a is, result on this your, and say, yeah. Why is your model just ChatGPT Turbo? Like, do you not need to specify three, four, three point five, something like that, or is it just um, that, you that's can thing? you can can you do a dot? configure different versions of it here if you want? No, no, just model dot. What, what do you get? Yeah, right there. So, oh, okay, you can there do it is. Dolly. Like I said, you can yeah, do no, images. No. You can do chat. Oh, there GPT it is. GPT four. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we'll hit that. Um, this is important, folks. This max tokens. So what'll happen is if there's like a way to call this create chat completion async without any of this, and when you do it, defaults to a max tokens of like ten. So the answers you get back are like less than a sentence long, and they're truncated off. So you want to set the max tokens to give you a response that's long enough to be useful. So I've got this set at. Uh, 500 and this temperature is like how creative do you want the chatbot to be do you want it to be exact or precise or do you want it to be uh more lenient uh, with, with what it does so i've got yeah. it kind of dialed to the middle yeah. um, so hold on hold on hold on um i i don't want to hard code this i want my users to be able to control the temperature and tokens and so if yeah. if i were to do that then you would stick those up in uh, in the taskbar somewhere, and bring yeah, that you could put those in the in the chat components uh, toolbar, and then you'd have to bring them in as parameters yeah. here. So right now, mm -hmm. I've just got the prompt. Yeah, uh, yeah you yeah, might want to say, uh, you know, what what temperature, and you know, I wouldn't put max tokens maybe in a user interface because you you don't want somebody eating up a bunch of uh, dollars. <laughs> uh, but you know, this is this is basically controlling cost here. Uh, yeah. So if the the response ends up being like you know 20 pages of stuff <laughs> you're what, what gonna be paying some, for all of that generation in paris yeah because you're paying per token basically yeah. with these services so that i wouldn't put in a slider but this one i might mm -hmm. um and you could pass that through through your prime parameters there so for for uh, the uninitiated can you explain what temperature is yeah so that is like do i want here let's do a real world example uh let's go to bing and then hit copilot and then in copilot your temperature setting is right here choose your conversation conversation style creative balanced precise um this is a temperature of zero i believe and this is a temperature of one, one. and this would be five yeah so that's it's our like temperature how, how, how confidently will it hallucinate yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, uh, we'll can, can, can you can you ask it to be snarky? Yeah, make it maybe. So make I'm going to return to string here. Um, the reason I'm choosing to string is because mm -hmm. uh, if I look at the result, there's actually multiple things going on in here. Um, it could be image. It could be a lot of different things. Um, and then there are different. Um, let's see, is, what is it called? I think it's choices. So you could have multiple choice results come back. What are uh, choices? So, so it'll have more than one answer for the thing that you asked for. And basically, I've only got the ability right now to return one string. So I would have no. to do something like choice zero. Um, and uh, that would do the same thing as calling two string. So I could call that, I think, without the two string. It's about the same uh gives me a choice cannot convict okay chat choice and then there's like you a dot message, to dot message. yeah okay so that is the same equivalent to what i just had there or not no for some reason close enough 
So I'm just going to call two string, make it easy because right. this is going to be a single response um, model anyway. So you can customize the models and you can have them do all sorts of crazy stuff. We're, get, we're not doing multiple choice on this one. Uh, we're going to call two string, send that back. So that is our open AI service, and that should actually be fully functional now. And I would say we can go ahead and run that, but there's a catch, Sam. There's a but. This is only the AI service on the server, and this is a uh, uh, Blazor automatic rendering uh, application. So it will render Blazor on the server using this open AI service, the one on the client still has a fake service. So Wait, let's go what? ahead and run it. Let's go ahead and run it and just see what, what happens here. What's the point? Uh, this is a speed optimization for Blazor. So I don't have to wait for uh, the user to download all of the, um, uh, the bits for Blazor server. Uh, let's see, how does Blazor work? We can type that in. And it says, this is a fake API. So we're still hitting the fake API. Watch this, Sam. Let's do inspect how, here. When does it switch over? What can it do? We're going to turn off network? Uh, no, then it has no way of switching. We're going to go over to application. And I am going to nuke all of the storage for this app clear site data this should force uh, it to completely reload blazer and um it will then switch uh, back to server so because i have no web assembly mm -hmm. no web assembly to run at all so the only way to process interactivity is going to be with signal r so we'll go ahead and refresh that and it was quick see how fast that loaded it didn't wait for web assembly to download it's doing it in the background and then we should be able to say how does laser work yeah that's that's what Thindle is explaining Generate. so this stuff this stuff is new oh to and me. i hit i hit an exception yeah I that's fine exception. but what was that uh, I'm, I'm trying to understand this as well like first visit to run on server download binaries in the background second visit have binaries on client with wasm yeah i don't know what that exception was for it swallowed it and I don't have detailed errors on, so I don't know what it was. So there could be an error with my service or it could be something to do with it trying to toggle between Blazor server and WebAssembly. Uh, do you know, do you even make the call? Uh, can you hit a breakpoint on the server? I can hit a breakpoint. Or maybe your credit card. Uh, we can <laughs> put manage. that there. Um, <laughs> should be resolving the key okay let's go ahead and let's try it one more time we'll put debugging on we've only got a few minutes and uh john bristow is going to be joining us and doing some eat sleep oh, code so let's try to get this working uh let's go ahead and make sure we're running on server by again nuking we need to go into application again uh there it is application storage clear site data that's going to remove the WebAssembly bits. We'll do a refresh again, see how quick that loaded. Um, and then how does Blazor work or not? <laughs> and then generate, and let's see if we got, now it's still the same error. It doesn't look like it are hit. You, are you debugging or are you not debugging? Yeah, I hit debug. I never hit my breakpoint, so it's erring out so earlier than that breakpoint. It's a thing between Blazor server and WebAssembly. Yeah, let's go ahead and try to like. Why don't you just like bit first. drop it in the WebAssembly itself? Let it do client side. Well, we'll we'll just fix it the right way. How about that, Sam? <laughs> we need to write another service here. Oh, geez. And um, to do this the right way, we really need to make this uh, OpenAI HTTP service because we want to call to our server and let it do the work. Um, so we'll go ahead and change that. Uh, let's go ahead and rename that. Uh, rename and then come on Visual Studio don't be slow on me rename file there we go and then we can come in there all right there we go so we've renamed it in there but it is not yet an HTTP service we need to write some more code right so I'm going to cheat once again can't you just drop the service implementation on the client side for now no, <laughs> that would be bad because we'd be exposing the uh, no, API you're not. key. No, you're not. So, you're, you're still reading the API key off a config. 
No, it would still it would make the API um, call oh, in the open. Oh, I see. Like once it returns, then if anybody is looking at the API, you just look key at the or, traffic and you yeah, see you the, the API, API key, key flying across the wire. All right, you're so, being very cautious. Um, we have OpenAPI HTTP service that injects HTTP client. Uh, it does a post as JSON async. It calls out to OpenAI, passes the prompt off, uh, gets some data back, does a read string async, which is the chat result, and returns it. So now, oh, now, now we've you've got, got fancy. Okay, so now yeah. your client is always, always going to call back to that server side. Yeah. You know, so this is calling a URL that does not exist. So we need to write that up in the server. So we need to go to program CS again. And we're going to come down to the bottom. And what we're going to do here at the bottom is we are going to use a minimal API. <laughs> so just bring in all the things that .NET we're going to write a minimal three API three years. And we'll drop the minimal API in. And I'll take this with open AI off. <laughs> because I don't have Swagger installed on here and I don't want to go through the process of it. So what this does, Sam, is we're going to do a map post because this is going to be the post coming from Blazor server or Blazor WebAssembly that hits this endpoint. It's going to call asynchronously uh, and get the prompt from the body of that post. Then it will inject a service of I open uh, AI services, which is our service that we already wrote and it will make that request passing in the prompt and it will return that response back to the client make sense yeah, yeah. we good all right so now we should be able to run it and it doesn't matter if we're in WebAssembly or on blazor server we should get a successful response so hopefully that yellow banner is gone uh so we are going to ask this how does blazor work hit generate and I still have an error so something something is not configured right in this Too many so we're, we're gonna do the um, uh, the chef uh, TV chef uh, oh, Julia way of doing this. bring it in yeah the Julia child uh, <laughs> and I'm gonna close this one we'll stop debugging and I'm gonna come over to this one and I'm gonna say here's the, the same magical exact code. thing where everything left works. right where we started <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one's coming out of the oven. We'll hit run. And, oh, I think I forgot to inject HTTP client. That mm -hmm. might have been it. So HTTP client was missing. So it wasn't able to, but that should have thrown an error I could see. So I'm not quite sure where the error was in that other one. And I've got... Like Pindle uh, said, that doesn't work either. <laughs> that is not a you. good response there. Why are we getting an about blank? Something's hung. Visual Studio being Visual Studio. Try that right. again. I'll it's do it without the button. That was a lot faster. All right. So now I can say, how does Blazor work? And I can hit generate. And this actually takes a minute. This is actually making a call now. So it's waiting and oh, waiting. Nice. Is the, Notice the skeleton, though. Is, there, is like, that built in? The skeleton? That's built in. That's part ah, of it. Ah, nice, nice. There we there go. go. How does Blazor work? Blazor is a web framework developed by Microsoft that allows developers to build interactive user interfaces using C-sharp set of JavaScript. Here's how it works. <sighs> hmm. And it did it all, all right. within 500 tokens. So that actually made a real call to a real thing. Yeah. And gave us real results. All so right. Well, this is step good. one with a little bit of over-engineering, if I may say. <laughs> but I did it in 40 minutes though, Sam. Yeah, no, no, you did. You really did. Mm. But now I can take this and I can drop it in my native apps. Because why not? Yeah. And what's really cool is I can push this up to GitHub, which I will as soon as I tidy it up a little bit. But since that uh API key is in the user secrets file, it won't go into GitHub and get get nuked out by a bunch of people taking advantage of it. Yep. Yep. All right. Good stuff. Good stuff. A um, lot more to tinker around it. Um, maybe we do another stream sometime. I, I want to know about the configurability of the taskbars and um, different types of uh, tokens and different types of prompts, uh, localization and other things. So we'll keep working on it. I'm just asking some rudimentary questions, Sam. I don't 
Let's see. Let's see. I what didn't, chat didn't see. What, what did you ask? Oh, you didn't get to see? I'll yeah. zoom in for when it comes back. All right. Oh, wow. How do I deal with Sam's microaggressions? <laughs> Dealing with microaggressions can be challenging, but here's important. Recognize and understand Ignore. microaggressions. Ignore them all. <laughs> Self-reflection, see? <laughs> <laughs> it's there we go, it's Sam. It's you, it's not me. It's you who Sam's Sam <laughs> oh, boy, To initiate funny. a conversation about their microaggressions. Engaging uh, dialogue, yes. Let's, let's bring in a friend. <laughs> Seek um, professional so, help. Speaking of professional help. <laughs> Here's some professional <laughs> help. Mr. John uh, Bristow, geez. how do we, Watching you guys how do we stumble deal? This is hilarious. <laughs> uh, stumble? Sammy. What do you mean? This was lots of, yeah, that's, this was fun. minutes of preparation. What are you talking about? Right. No, John, it was so beautiful. Like yep. he coded for 40 minutes and then just like trashed it and brought in a thing that worked. It was beautiful. <laughs> Story of my life. Uh, Looks good. Trust me, my code works now.